friends, it's Deanna Willison from Our Blooming Catholic Life, and look what I got. Yes, I got a new to me, new to me book on John Bradburn. If it's looking familiar, no it's not. The book I had before was Strange Vagabond of God, and this one's John Bradburn, The Vagabond of God. Completely different. If you can't tell the difference, and they're both very classic pictures of John. This one is by Father John Dove. Uh, a Jesuit priest who was a very dear friend of John Bradburn's. This is by Didier Rance, the French historian. Completely different, right? Um, and they are probably going to be different. Written by your best friend is going to be totally different. So this is the book I've talked about before. You can see they're definitely different books. Okay, so let's jump in here. I did just get this book for my birthday. And you're probably like, why is she talking about John so much lately? I mean, we all know if you haven't seen that before, my stories about John, um, he's become a very dear friend of mine. And honestly, I got this book <laughs> for my birthday and John's birthday is coming up, but not just any birthday. It is going to be his 100th birthday. Um, of course, we all know he was martyred, so he's not 100 years on earth, but still it's 100 years since his birth. And we are going to have this great festival online where we're reading 100 of his poems starting the 100th day before his birthday. So the first one is coming out this, ooh, the first one, by the time you see this, the first one's already gonna be out. We're starting on Saturday and you're not seeing this till Monday. Oh friends, you're gonna be behind. You're gonna have to jump out and see them. Go to the John Bradburn Memorial Society page. It's linked here on my channel as another channel and I'll try and remember to put it in the comments below. Okay, so let's get on with the book here. Um, let's see. We did say it's John Bradburn, Vagabond of God by Didier Rance. Translated from the French, and I'm not sure how to say this first name. Malachi, Malachi, O'Higgins, abridged by David Crystal, forward by Jean Vanier. And the publishers, Darton, Longman, and Todd. It was first published in Great Britain in 2017, and, but first published in the original language, of course, French, in 2012 by Editions Salvatore Paris. Let's check out next the contents page. Very big type, easy to read here, no problem. Before we get into it, then there's going to be abbreviations, a preface, a foreword by Jean Vanier. Um, and it looks like, if you see, these are very chronological. Uh, although he has the dates, he does give you a title for that time of John's life as well. And so if you've been attending the JBMS, the John Bradburn Memorial Society monthly chats, some of these time periods may seem familiar to you. I don't know really because I, I haven't read this book yet. I'm waiting till I do it with you. Um, okay. And then the last chapter really gets to you. Chapter 11, John after John. And if you're wondering again why this is such a, a particularly poignant book to read this time of year, chapter 10, the Passion of John Bradburn, September 1979. And, and the parallels, the parallels with the trial of Jesus are just phenomenal. They're quite mind blowing. And so I'm excited to read how this is handled in here. Um, and after the chapter 11, John after John, and what does that mean? I'm so excited to even get to those later chapters. It has a prayer for the beatification of John Bradburn. And I think I think that's in here as well in the little John Bradburn prayers booklet. If you don't have one of these, contact me. I can get you a small prayer card as well as the booklet that has a few more prayers in it and a tiny, tiny biography on the back. I can mail these out to you at any time. Um, if you're in America, it's easiest for me. If not, go to um, email info at johnbradburn.com. Okay, after that, there's going to be a glossary, sources, and acknowledgements. A proper book by a proper historian. So exciting. The abbreviations. The first one I'm going to translate because it's not translated and I really can't say these words. It's AFMM, which I'm thinking is going to be the Association of Female Medical Missionaries. ANC, the African National Council. ARU, Administration Reinforcement Units. JBMS, you've probably heard me say before, it's John Bradburn Memorial Society. JOC is Joint Operation Command. The next one should also sound familiar, SFO, Secular Franciscan Order. And you may know that we also now go by OFS, 
A lot of us have switched over to OFS, the Latin order of our name. Um, UNAC, United African National Party, that was led by Bishop Mazorea. I really need to work on my pronunciations, I apologize. UDI, Unilateral Declaration of Independence. ZANLA, Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army, which is ZANU's military branch. ZANU is Zimbabwe African National Union, which was led by Robert Mugabe. And ZAPU, Zimbabwe African People's Unit, which was Joshua Nkomo. ZIPRA then is Zimbabwe People's Revolutionary Army, which is ZAPU's military branch. This is all going to be important. If you remember back when I was reviewing this book, I said you had to have a history of Zimbabwe to understand this book. And I, in fact, reviewed a history of Zimbabwe. This book looks like it has it built in for us, friends. So that's going to be great. A one-stop shop right there. Uh, the preface. The preface looks like it is written by Didier. So let's just read a little bit so we can get into the mind of Didier as he begins. In 1983, John Bradburn entered my life. You have been to Africa. Do you think you could raise money for this project? The project I was being asked to consider by aid to the church in need concerned the rehabilitation of a chapel and houses in a leper center at Matemwa. I accepted all the more readily, having already worked as a volunteer a few years earlier in neighboring Zambia on the development program, which included a colony of lepers, and I had greatly admired their courage. 200,000 French francs were raised and sent to Matemwa. The letter of thanks I subsequently received was accompanied by a booklet entitled John Bradburn and Matemwa, 1921-1979, written by Father John Dove, which gave a brief account of the life and death of this English lay Franciscan tertiary. Reading it filled me with enthusiasm for this extraordinary person. Apart from the many reasons for loving John, which I hope will be shared by the readers of this book, there were several points of personal convergence the lepers, Africa, wanderings, flute, poetry, Franciscan third order, Franciscan secular order since 1979, even if I was well aware of the gap between this life, all given to God and mind. Ten years later, John Bradburn, in this book I've simply called him John, was still in my heart when I had a lunch at ACN headquarters with a missionary from Zimbabwe, Father Tim Peacock. The first thing I asked him was whether he had heard of a man called John Bradburn, by way of reply, he said he was organizing an annual pilgrimage to Matemwa. As the conversation continued, he told me a Father Dove had published in Ireland a book of rem remembrances about John. A few weeks later, the strange vagabond of God arrived in the post, and I eagerly read it, resolving to translate into French one day and make John known in French. I'm not going to go any further. You can see the exciting journey and love for John that Didier has right off the bat, and that he is a beautiful writer. And he ends his preface, I don't want to ruin it for you, but he ends his preface saying, much like you have seen with me, the enthusiasm which John stirs in me is not the same as that it was in 1983. It is greater because you only come to grow him more, grow to love him more the more you read him. Ah, and so actually the person who's writing the foreword says, after my visit to Zimbabwe in 1982, I wrote the following to my community. Aha, so they have a personal connection as well. How lovely. It begins out between Eden and the cross. It looks like it has one of John's little poems in the beginning. And it starts out right there. John Brown was born on June 14th, 1921, between Eden and the cross, or more exactly, east of Eden and at the foot of the cross. Eden is the name of the mountain river, which flows close to Scarewith, the village where he was born. And the cross is the cross fell at 2,930 feet, the second highest mountain in England, the mountain overlooking the town. From paradise to Golgotha, the geographical metaphor seems to proclaim a singular destiny, even if many other children besides John were born in Scarewith. And I apologize if I haven't said that the town's name right. What a lovely book. And you're going to jump right in. You can see the subheadings as well. Easy to find. The poems are inset as poems should be. Um, it looks like they have the same line spacing, so they're not going to be difficult to read at all. Again, you can see this is fairly easy to read. It's not terribly large print, but I think it's pretty average. Um, it's all laid out pretty much like that with the poems interspersed. That's going to be lovely um, that he's taken the time to put the poems in the appropriate spots. 
Okay, so let's go on back because this is just a book overview and we're already at 10 minutes. I hope I'm getting you so involved that you're going to have to grab this book and grab it quick once the 100th anniversary happens. We don't know. Um, everybody maybe will be hungry to learn more about John. Let's see here. Sorry, quite the book. And I have a card at the end that's keeping me from just flipping to the back. Tick, tick. tick. It's about, what is it? 400 and... 80 pages, it's like, yeah, 477 pages. And then the prayer for the beatification of John Bradburn, which is very small. There is a glossary, which is lovely. Um, It's so funny. In order to avoid anachronism, place names have been written as they were at the time they were mentioned. So he gives you um, the original name and the, then the current name, because of course, Zimbabwe was Rhodesia when this started. Um, which is funny because I can't pronounce any of them one or the other, except for Matemwa, <laughs> maybe Herer. Um, yes, and the country has been known by several names. From 1895 to 1964, it was Southern Rhodesia. 1965 to 1978 was Rhodesia. 78 to 80 was Rhodesia hyphen Zimbabwe. In some 1980, it has been called Zimbabwe. Shona and Africans terms used in this book. So there's a little bit of the language. When I say Afrikaans, I think, sorry, I think you say Afrikaans. There's a, it's not a C, it's a K and then two A's. Afrikaans, I be believe uh, Afrikaans are the name that you give to um, white natives of Africa. I'm not 100% sure on that. And it, the book is going to explain that more. So there's a lot in here. Let's see here. Sources, the John Bryburn archives, the anthologies. Um, one is by David and Hillary Crystal. There's the CD, poems edited by David Crystal, personal recollections and testimonies. And he lists these all out. How lovely. Um, books containing other rec recollections, other published accounts, articles in the newsletters he used. Very lovely. Articles and books extracts, films. Um, and various, I guess it's various. Um, interesting. I don't even know what those are. There's some, to say that there's some essays and sculptors. Interesting. That is various at the end. And then there are acknowledgments, of course, everyone who had helped him on the way. How lovely. Okay. And of course, there's a little picture on the back. Oh, let's read a little bit on the back. Um, it just says from the foreword, is there any? No, there's no reviews. You know I like to look for reviews. I don't see that. Aha, uh -huh. here's one. John Bradburn, The Vagabond of God, is the most comprehensive biography of this remarkable man based on three years of research through the archives of the John Bradburn Memorial Society. Don't forget, that's www.johnbradburn.com interviews with people who knew John, and travels in his footsteps. The book was published first in France, where it won the Grand Prix Catholique de Literature. I butchered that too. Sorry, folks. Um, how fun. If you don't know who Didier is, tell you now, because I'm reading it straight from the back of the book. Didier Rance is a writer, historian, and lecturer. He is a secular Franciscan, a deacon in the Catholic Church, former National Director for France of Aid to the Church in Need and Vice President of the John Henry Newman French Association. The book was translated into English by M. O'Higgins, who is taught at the École Norm Normale Supérieure de Saint Cloud, the University de Paris X, the Dublin Institute of Technology and Holy Trinity College in Zimbabwe is abridged by linguist David Crystal, author of the Cambridge Encyclopedia of the English Language and a Life Made of Words, the Poetry and Thought of John Bradburn. Lovely book. If you don't have it, you need to get it. Get out to the johnbradburn.com website and you can see how to spell John's name right there, johnbradburn.com. And don't forget, we have a YouTube channel. Get out there besides the 100 po Poems Project. We've been cataloging and organizing all of our videos, as well as all those we can find on the internet. Um, God bless you, friends. Get this book. I know it's 15 minutes for a book overview, but it is well worth it. Get this book. God bless you, friends.